Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and this video is a continuation of the previous video where I'm talking about what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. It's not like Las Vegas. The changes, the dr dr dramatic changes that are occurring in the Arctic will have implications and are having implications on the entire world. And as we lose sea ice and snow cover in the Arctic, the warming is greatly accelerated and that will further disrupt the jet streams and, and cause uh, much worse extreme weather events around the planet and very, very soon affect the global food supply, our ability to grow food. So food prices will spike up significantly and people will sit bolt upright maybe and say, well, what the heck's going on? Finally, you know, climate people that aren't that think climate is off in the future will get yet another surprise, another kick in the ass to, to take action. So just to uh, reiterate, because I like this uh, depiction so good, Antti Leponen in Finland has generated this graphic which shows temperature anomalies by country from 1880 to 2017. So the year is here and all the countries are here and the color codes are between plus two Celsius and minus two Celsius, the anomaly. And you can see how the abundance of reds um, in the, from 2000 on, there's a huge abundance of red. So we'll just show this again. So just pick out your country and have a look at it, how the temperatures have been changing, you know, since 1880 um, in your country. And you can compare it to other countries around the world. Okay, so there's different blues and reds, but now there's more and more yellows and reds and more and more reds occurring after 2000 and the reds seem to be uh, taking off and exploding as well as the dark oranges. So plus one, plus two degrees Celsius. Um, this data can also be depicted here, which I'll just show again. Um, okay, are we going? There we go. So this is, uh, Europe is down in this quadrant, Asia in this region, Africa up here, Oceania, so Australia, New Zealand, Pacific Islands here, and the Americas, North and South America. And as, as we cycle through the years, you can see the uh, bands here. So the zero plus one plus two, and over 2000, past the year 2000, you see more and more um, reds here, like especially in Europe. I mean, Europe is just being slaughtered proportionally more than other countries. 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018. I mean, Europe is just being hammered, you know, in various countries in Asia too, more so than uh, other countries. Okay, so this is a very, uh, you know, key, good way of explaining things. And I've asked uh, Antti if he could just show a world map label each country and have the different color code colors coded code, coded for temperature uh, for each of the regions and that will allow you to depict clearly which regions and and see patterns in that map that you can't see um, in this particular data here okay so going back to uh, this paper now um, the arctic is breaking climate records altering weather worldwide let me show you some of the key figures in here because these are very useful, um, and this is a Jennifer Francis article in Scientific American. So the Arctic is just completely changing to a different regime. We're crossing, we've crossed tipping points with the Arctic. We're going to a much, much warmer Arctic, and that will have global implications, of course. So the first thing is the Greenland ice loss. Okay, so this is ice loss um, since uh, 2002. Okay, and this is when the uh, satellite measurements of its effect on the Earth's gravity field began. So the GRACE satellites were doing measurements here. And you can see the, the drop, the ice loss in trillions of metric tons from Greenland. And all of this ice loss from Greenland is contributing to rising sea levels. Okay, the meltwater contribu contribution to sea level rise is increasing faster than any other culprit. So Greenland is what's doing it. Um, 
the winter sea ice extent in the Arctic. You know, as winter deepens, ice spreads over the Arctic Ocean, builds up, but the maximum reach has declined steadily, especially across the Barren and Bering Sea. Less ice cover allows the open ocean to send more heat and moisture into the air, and that significantly disrupts Arctic weather. And because the jet streams change, right, that disrupts weather across the planet, across the northern hemisphere. And then there's feedbacks that spread it to the southern hemisphere that I've discussed. Um, so this is the beginning of the satellite era. This is the annual maximum ice extent. Um, and this is the loss here. You can see the, the decrease. And this is a percentage less than 1979. And so you can see 2017, um, it's approaching almost 15% less ice than 79. And you can see 2017, 2015, 2016, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. All of these years are between 10 and 15% less ice uh, in those years um, since then, then compared to 1979. Of course, it's not just the extent that's decreasing, the winter sea ice volume is decreasing. So here we go in the drop in the winter sea ice volume. So by 2017, the amount of winter ice floating on the Arctic Ocean had dropped an astounding 42.5 percent since 1979. So the, the thinner ice can more easily be pushed by winds. Um, thinner ice, it melts faster in the warmer months. So the summer ice volume has dropped up to 80 percent in the same time span. So this is the, the, in the winter, the percent less than 1979 reaches about 42 and a half percent here in 2017. And here's the preceding years um, um, from 2010 to 2017, all in this region. So they're all basically, this is about drop of 30 percent to 42 and a half percent in the, you know, in, in the uh, 2010s onward. Okay, so this is an interesting way of depicting that. The winter air temperature has climbed rapidly. So on certain days, Arctic temperatures can soar 20 degrees Celsius above normal, and they're now more elevated throughout the winter. The changes are occurring much more noticeably in the winter than any other time. In 2016, the mean winter temperature was almost 9 degrees higher than in 1979. This trend weakens the jet stream, brings deep cold snaps and snows to the U.S., Europe, and Asia. So here's a 32-year average from 1979 to 2010 right here. And you can see how the winter air temperature anomalies, there we go, almost 6 degrees here, degrees warmer than 1979 in 2016. It was uh, actually uh, more than eight and a half, almost nine degrees Celsius, warmer than normal in, in 2016. And you can see this was a strong El Nino year, 2015, 2016. And you can see the years from 2010 to 2017 here. So all very, very warm temperatures in the Arctic. This is the Arctic temperature amplification. Now much warmer temperatures in the Arctic much less sea ice, there's much more water vapor in the atmosphere in the Arctic. So with less sea ice cover, there's more open oceans, so there's more evaporation of water, so there's more moisture, water vapor going up into the air. Even a small rise has big underappreciated consequences. Water vapor is a greenhouse gas that traps heat. It also condenses into clouds, releasing its latent heat. The clouds can enhance the warming too. This is in the winter, so the sun's not shining, right? It's completely dark. There's a lot of water vapor in the atmosphere. That water vapor traps the heat and uh, keeps the Arctic much, much warmer in the winters than, than, than it would otherwise be. So this is the winter water vapor anomaly from 79 to 2017. Uh, and you can see the units here are in kilograms per square meter. So there's almost, this is three, this is six, seven. So, so seven kilograms per square meter more water in the atmosphere in the Arctic than in 70, than, than, um, than the 32 year average, okay? And this is a percentage higher in 79. So 2016, again, the strong El Nino year 
was about 41% more water vapor in the atmosphere in the Arctic. And then the years from 2010 to 2017 are shown here. So the lowest was 2013, about 7% more. The highest 2016, um, 42%. That's a huge range, okay? And you might remember from the clausius clapeyron equation for each degree Celsius rise in temperature, there's 7% more water vapor roughly in the atmosphere. So you can check those numbers in comparison with these numbers. So the Arctic amplification, of course, the Arctic's warming faster than the rest of the world. The average temperature in the Arctic is getting closer to the average temperature in the mid-latitudes, right? The temperature gradient is decreased. This, this decrease slows the jet stream year-round, raises the chances of the northern hemisphere getting persistent extreme weather patterns, like stuck blocking patterns, and this creates heat waves, long duration heat waves. If you're under the, tro the, the ridge of the wave, if you're in the trough, you get um, unsettled weather, you get lots of rain, cold spells, floods, okay? And also hurricanes last longer because the guiding is slowed down. They're, the jet streams are slowing down, so the hurricane movement translation is slowing down, and we're seeing hurricanes going ashore that just sit there like Harvey. And a paper just came out saying that, you know, after one day, after landfall, within one day, most of the hurricanes would have lost 75% of their energy, but now it's only 50%. So they're lasting much, much longer. And, you know, Harvey stuck around half over the Gulf of Mexico, half over the southern U.S., and just churned away and lasted, you know, it seemed for days and days and days, three or four days before it weakened. And it dumped up to five feet of rain in, in some places in Texas. Um, so this is the temperature in degrees Celsius that, that the Arctic is exceeding the mid-latitude warming and mid-latitude warming. Okay, so this is mid-latitude, 45 degrees, annual temperature anomaly baseline. So t the Arctic is actually three degrees warmer here versus the mid-latitude 45 degree uh, zonal temperature, if you like. And the increase in amplification relative to 79, 2016 again, highest, reaching almost, uh, you know, 4.4, 4.3 degrees or so relative to the mid-latitude warming. And all of the other 2010 to 2017 years are, are in here. So at least basically almost two degrees, the highest of almost four and a half degrees. Okay, so, you know, summer sea ice is vanishing. There's more and more... Uh, uh, phytoplankton in the uh, in in the Arctic, the permafrost um, is thawing, so more and more methane is coming up. Okay, so um, you know in the weather, the blocking patterns and the weather, you know this, this is a great image of of uh, water running off of the uh, the ice, and we're getting all of these extremes. Um, and you can go on. I'm not going to go into all of the rest of the details, but just Google this paper, The Arctic is Breaking Climate Record. It's from a couple of years ago, and it's got an excellent synopsis of what's going on in the Arctic. I just want to show you a couple other things here. Um, this is the Copernicus. Now, I'll do, I'll do an educational video on all of the different features of Copernicus, but we're looking at the mass concentration of chlorophyll. Um, this is in the Arctic, and uh, if we go to uh, central, um, you know, um, if we go to a map of the world, you can see how it varies. And you can try to figure out why it's high in some regions and not in other regions. And we can even go to the South Pole and look at the uh, chlorophyll in that region. So I will, there's all kinds of great data here. Um, and I will show you how to generate these maps and have a look at it yourself. If we're looking at methane, this is the methane, um, the methane hotspots, and we can look at the, you know, Arctic region, for example. And we can look, this is at the surface, okay, we can look uh, at uh, halfway up through the atmosphere, 500 millibar. And you can see, you know, the methane and the concentrations up in those regions. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.